This is a real quick video on how I made this kitchen cornice moulding. While it looks complicated, this is actually a pretty easy thing to do on the spindle moulder. This is made up of 12 layers of poplar, which are laminated over a former to give a finished thickness of about 26 mil. And we've got a height of this moulding. This is about 105 mil in height, but the finished moulding is going to be trimmed down and leave a, around a 90 mil finish height to the cornice, which matches to the rest of the kitchen. I've glued this lamination up around the former using some UF resin glue and then put it inside a vacuum bag to so it presses it around that former and pulls all the laminations tight together so that when we get this finished product when you, you get real up close to it you can't really tell where the glue laminations differ between one and another other than the fact that they're slightly different colour you can't really see the glue lines so if that's up, you know, if it's further than a foot away from your eyes, you can't tell whether that glue line is grain or whether it's a glue line. So get a really, really nice tight joint from the vac bag. You can find more info on gluing up and the vac bag in the curved corner unit build. I'll put a link to them videos in the description, but for this particular video, we're just gonna look at how I take the laminations as they come off the former and go through the machining processes to end up with this finished piece here. So I've made a former for the size of the cupboard. So that former's radius is the internal radius of the doors. And the doors are set back four mil from the face of the frame. So I've got four mils worth of packing sheet on the former. Then I've got the frame. So that the bottom piece of timber here is the frame component of my top cupboard. So that will make up the three rails of the cupboard. And then I've put some cellophane between the top rail and the cornice mouldings. This is my laminations to make the cornice moulding. It's only a, a slim cornice, it's about 25 mil thick. Um, and I've laminated that on top of the frame. So when I take it all out of the bag, I should get a perfect match around the radius of the frame for my cornice. So when I go to fit it in place, it, it's a lovely match. If you're watching this video and you haven't seen the progress of the curve cabinet there's a couple of links in the description to the first curve cabinet I ever made and then I'm doing a second video as well which has probably not been released yet if you're watching this as it's been released but that's going to be detailing what I did differently on the top unit against what I did on the the first unit I did on like the base unit so that's going to be quite a good video if you're thinking of doing some curved work or a curved cabinet much like this then that second video, well both videos will be, be quite a good watch for you, quite informative but hopefully they've not stuck together yet Beautiful. I'll take this off the mould I've got the rails so that will be cut down into three sections to make the rails of my cupboard. And then this piece will be my cornice and it should fit together absolutely beautifully. Just going to nip the glue off where the glue squeezes. It's one of these edges. There's a bit of like uh, rough glue squeeze so I can reference flat off the timbers to rip this down. Go. Well, actually, that's gone beautifully well. There's not a single gap in that section, which is nice and handy. Considering I'm going to be moulding or cutting through the layers, really good. I've got to ascertain what angle to machine these components at. So, this is the top of my cutter block, 
as it will sit in the spindle moulder if I run it in the, in the right direction. So I'm just going to sit on that surface there, around that square corner. Draw around the profile nice and accurately. This is my piece of timber, this is the cutter. Now my cornies that I've done on the rest of the pieces of wood is around 25 mil thick at the widest point. And then at the very bottom, I've got a little nib here and then I've got a bevel back at 45 degrees. So I use my little angle gauge, these are brilliant. I'll put another link to these in the description. I set my planer up with this, so when I'm checking my planer, it's dead, dead square. I use this rather than an engineer's square, because this is, this is so accurate. And it's got a, just a nice, long, flat edge to both edges. So that's what I use to set my machinery up. I think it's great. Anyway, we're about four mil at the bottom, so roughly looks a bit like that as a bottom profile. More milk. It's basically as narrow as I could get it at the bottom with it looking right and then we've got like a 90 degree top so it goes to about there. It's 90 mil overall. 90 top. So that is my corny section. So from here down to here, that's the line that I'm going to follow. So I'll have to cut a new bevel on the bottom. So it's going to be 90 mil. So I'm going to make this face dead nice and clean, and then the top can just be a bit taller to be scribed in and then cut down afterwards. So 90 mil, I can work out now this bevel here. So I know my sheet here is square to my cutter because I've held it in the block and up against that edge. So I work out the bevel I need to set my cutter at. So it's uh, 10.8 degrees. So it's 79. 0.2, which is away from 90, 10.8. So when I go to the spindle, I'll put the block in the spindle. I'm just going to tilt it back. The cornies will be vertical as it runs past the spindle. And then the cutter block, so it would look like that if everything was straight. The cutter block is tilted back 10.8 degrees so that I get this perfectly matched profile. What I'm going to do then is put the cutter in, set it to the height that I need it at the right bevel, and then I can cut the opening to suit. These things are like bed insert rings, so they're the sort of cast inserts that go in the bed of your spindle moulder. So when you're looking at buying a spindle moulder, it's quite a, a pivotal point of decision on a, on a lot of machines is to sort of how big that bed opening is because you've got to be careful at what size cutters you can fit in. So you might look at a little cutter like this as being, I don't know, I think they had something like 88 mil. What's that say on there? 112, well it's, it's 78 mil as a cutter size and 112 if you use the little mini CMT cutters. But then suddenly you put a, another cutter in it and it's a lot bigger than it originally was. So you just gotta be wary that the, the bed opening size of your machine is capable of fitting the blocks that you want to use inside it. And this particular machine, when you bevel it back, has got a smaller rating for the size of cutter than if it's sat in a perfectly vertical position. So something to bear in mind if you're looking at buying a spindle moulder, that this bed opening size is quite a critical thing to look at. The extra that you spend on a spindle that's got the ability to tilt, you'll gain back in the fact that you've not got to buy loads of sets of cutters to suit every different angle of operation you want to work at. So you can, you know, you don't, you, if you're just making windows, you'd immediately save on a sill cutter block because you could buy a, a fairly tall sort of 
carbide insert rebate block and just tilt it back to make your seals. So you can see the block there isn't actually that big sat in the opening of the spindle but by the time you've got the cutters on getting pretty close to the, the cast iron here so I'll show you the sort of difference it makes tilting it back. Just gonna unlock it. Turn this way on. Somewhere there. The easiest one handed. So hopefully you can see it's getting really close to there because as you tilt it. Doesn't like that focus. As you tilt it, you're sort of turning a flat arc. If you if you stand this way on the machine, you're creating that flat cutter, and you, you're turning it like that. So you, you sort of make it an oval shape as you take a flat plane across here. If I bring that up, sit somewhere. Somewhere there. See, I've got quite a bit of room at the back there, so we should be fine at that sort of angle. It's not going to catch anything on the bed. I've got no way in hell of tilting this big cutter with them blades in back to 45 degrees. It'll just, it'll just hit on all of this this cast bed round here. So, I think it's 125 mil. I can tilt back to 45 degrees uh, equally when you're purchasing bespoke cutters. So the cutters I've ordered from Paul at Cutter Profilers UK for the curved cabinet, he has rang me back and asked me, because I'd ordered them in a straight plane, so I needed to cut a 70 mil cut on these on this door style out of a 55 mil cutter. So what I ordered was a cutter that cut from sort of there to there. In a, in a flat plane, in a 55mm cutter. You know, so that's my spindle cutter that's cutting this, this arc. And I'll, I'll just tilt it back so I can start the cut. So the cutter was here, and just do that bit. And then turn the piece of wood over, and then this bit would be at the bottom. I'd do the second cut. So it's fine with the spindle moulder, but he just rang me up to check that I'd ordered that correctly, because if he didn't have a sp tilting spindle, you wouldn't be able to obviously turn that cutter back on itself to cut this bottom section. So what he suggested was make the cutter so it sort of started there and then finished up there at the top so that if you've not got a, a tilting spindle you could do one side, turn it over and then do the other side. So just worth thinking about, you know, if you're looking at buying a machine, set yourself up for the future and get something that's going to save you a bit of money and be more convenient. Set the height on that gutter. Okie dokie. Just there. The highest point of the gutter. I can measure that. 98mm. And then the deepest bit of the cut, me about there. So if I just pull these fences back till they miss. I can cut the opening 110. It'll, it'll trim itself back, but as long as I've got pretty much the, the right opening size. So if I do somewhere in the middle, 98. Ideally when you put a lot of faith in this backing board, you want something that's nice and strong, like a, an 18mm at least size board, because you don't want any flex in this back over the unsupported area of the spindle. So yeah, let's do that. I'm going to do it 95, and then it can cut its own way for the last little bit. So I just jigsawed that out. Normally, I'd say push the cutter through and just let the cutter break through the piece, but this is such a beast. I don't really like doing it with this one. So when you get the perfect matching hole in your backing board to the actual cutter, whereas doing it like this, the, the top cut there isn't going to be 
as wide because it's it's only cutting a very very shallow depth so it'd normally be a tapered cut on this particular cut um, but it's not going to matter like I say when you fire this up you want to sort of stand back from it it's quite ferocious really
So how about that for a bit of spindle moulding? Biggest cutter I've got, curved work, fed by hand. Um, yeah, you're probably not going to do much more than that on a spindle moulder. That's a 100mm cut around a 400mm radius. So, as you can see, there's ways and means on this machine of making it nice and safe so that you can, you can have a sort of safe working practice. At no point was I particularly near the cutter or body position at all times to sort of out the way of the machine. So if something caught, if this came loose and went into the cutter, it's going to go that way. So I'm trying to keep myself out of the way of anything that could potentially happen. Again, with the workpiece, you want to stand so that if it kicked out, it's going to go out and away from you. And then you've got the guides on there as well. So it can't fall into the cut anymore because of this. And there's no way it could fit physically in that gap. You've got uh, top support there, so your cut stays nice and even. And then the, a feed in and a feed out that stops you getting any wobbles on in the mould. So that'll help you big time when you come to sand it. But that is the result. So it's pretty good. Dead simple. Um, that's took me naff all time really to, to cut that out. You'd think that'd take you ages, like a fancy moulding like that, to, to get around the curve. but as probably gluing it up, laminating the block of wood was the, the longest part. Have a closer look at the laminations. If you stained that, you'd, well, you, you wouldn't tell that that was a laminated piece. They are absolutely perfect. Oh, I can't really tell. It just looks like wood grain where the laminations are. So if it was all from the same piece, I mean that bit there is a, is a blued piece of grain, you, could, you can pick up that that is a different piece, but if it was all from the same piece of wood, there's no way you'd see that that was laminated. Moment of truth, it's probably going to sit on the top of that one, so that'll be the top rail. It'll probably sit somewhere, oh look at that. She's bonnie, look at that, beautiful. The moulding matches where it's going to sit on that frame pretty nicely. I just sit it on my drawing to make sure that I've got enough material for it to run around there, which I've just, just, I cut it pretty close because I, I turned the vac back off and it actually just lifted off the former a little bit. So I've cut that pretty close to 50 mil. So about five mil either side describing here and over here. So I've just got to be careful that my frame doesn't end up too big because I mean gone each won't fit. But I'm going to call that a success. So there we go, that's a nice little video. I thought I'd make a bit of a feature out of moulding that up on the spindle moulder as opposed to just including it in the really long sort of build videos that I'm doing on the curved cupboard. So, Hope you enjoyed that one, and if you've not watched the curve covered videos, there's a lot of a lot of details and in-depth sort of stuff like this, all the way through them videos. So just go check them out.